Gaming has had its moments. Although it could be considered the youngest medium, I think the most profound and intelligent moment in gaming can still stand right up there with those of other media. I'm talking, of course, about the final conversation with the Patriot AI from Metal Gear Solid 2. Many regard the Metal Gear Solid series as the most intelligently written game series around, if not the most intelligently written series in modern entertainment, and the AI conversation in Metal Gear Solid 2 is its most thought-provoking moment. I think Hideo Kojima had two goals when writing the dialogue for this conversation. First, to show the superiority of the AI in comparison to the main character Raiden and by extension the player, and second, to have the AI demonstrate that it can and should systematically control society to optimize evolution. A large number of philosophical and political issues come into play in this conversation, such as free will versus cause and effect, truth versus accepted truth, control versus freedom, and the evolution of the human race in the information age. George Orwell and Isaac Asimov would have been impressed with the result. The conversation is easily the most realistic and far-reaching portrayal of AIs to date. Raiden, are you receiving? We're still here. How is that possible? The AI was destroyed! Only GW. Who are you? To begin with, we're not what you'd call human. Over the past 200 years, a kind of consciousness formed layer by layer in the crucible of the White House. It's not unlike the way life started in the oceans four billion years ago. The White House was our primordial soup, a base of evolution. We are formless. We are the very discipline and morality that Americans invoke so often. How can anyone hope to eliminate us? As long as this nation exists, so will we. In the first section of dialogue, the AI, or rather collection of AIs, gives a vague answer to Raiden's question of who, or rather what it is. Metal Gear Solid 4 later establishes that the AIs were created in the 1970s in the story, but the reason the AI says all of these things here is to build on the conspiracy-like narrative in the game that the U.S. government is, and has always been, controlled by the Patriot Organization, headed by these AIs. The comparison the AI makes of its development being similar to that of life alludes to how an AI could hypothetically come to be, and that evolution is its prime directive, something the rest of the conversation expands on. The other thing of note so far is that the AI calls itself more or less immortal. Creating information that becomes important in today's society is already accepted as the path to immortality, or as close as it gets. Everyone remembers the names Einstein and Darwin because of their contributions to science, for example. So if we created AIs, essentially thinking bits of information, it's not so grandiose to suppose that it could call itself immortal. Raiden finally decides to respond. Cut the crap! If you're immortal, why would you take away individual freedoms and censor the net? <laughs> Jack, don't be silly. Don't you know that our plans have your interests, not ours, in mind? What? Raiden is surprised that the AI's self-proclaimed purpose is to help people since up until this point Raiden believed that the Patriots were simply censoring information to keep themselves in power and that freedom from that censorship would be better. The AI's plan to argue otherwise. Jack, listen carefully, like a good boy. The mapping of the human genome was completed early this century. As a result, the evolutionary log of the human race lay open to us. We started with genetic engineering, and in the end, we succeeded in digitizing life itself. But there are things not covered by genetic information. What do you mean? Human memories, ideas, culture, history. Genes don't contain any record of human history. Is it something that should not be passed on? Should that information be left at the mercy of nature? We've always kept records of our lives, through words, pictures, symbols, from tablets to books. But not all the information was inherited by later generations. A small percentage of the whole was selected and processed, then passed on. Not unlike genes, really. That's what history is, Jack. The mention of the Human Genome Project, something that has already happened, and then genetic engineering and digitizing life to make AIs, things that have yet to happen, is a classic example of Kojima linking fact to his realistic fiction. The AIs then explain that in the same way evolution acts on genes, it acts on memes. Memes being units of information that are spread, and one of the themes of Metal Gear Solid 2. The AIs then point out where memes can be harmful. But in the current digitized world, 
Trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness, never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretations, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. And there you have it. The AIs are arguing for you not to watch degrading stuff on YouTube, MTV, the news, Fox News, pretty much anywhere that you can find fluff because it doesn't advance the human race. Like Sturgeon's Law says, 90% of everything is crap. This includes, like they said, stuff like scandals, petty issues, reality TV shows, things that we are naturally attracted to that don't serve a useful purpose other than to entertain. If you think about it, you can't really argue with that. It's true that we waste time in taking a lot of junk, and we really shouldn't create so much of it. Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? The AIs are saying that they're trying to guide the entire human race by means of controlling information and what we perceive of it. Not a new idea, but certainly something we are led to believe they could do better than any one person or organization. The digital society furthers human flaws and selectively rewards development of convenient half-truths. Just look at the strange juxtapositions of morality around you. Billions spent on new weapons in order to humanely murder other humans. Rights of criminals are given more respect than the privacy of their victims. Although there are people suffering in poverty, huge donations are made to protect endangered species. Everyone grows up being told the same thing. Be nice to other people. But beat out the competition. You're special. Believe in yourself and you will succeed. But it's obvious from the start that only a few can succeed. You exercise your right to freedom, and this is the result. All rhetoric to avoid conflict and protect each other from hurt. The untested truths, spun by different interests, continue to churn and accumulate in the sandbox of political correctness and value systems. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum. They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into the growing cesspool of society at large. The different cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No one is invalidated, but nobody is right. Not even natural selection can take place here. The world is being engulfed in truth. And this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. The AIs illustrate the fact here that people are attracted to ideas they like, not because they are right or make sense, but because they are convenient. The fact that people are very subjective. People don't like to have their persona hurt. People want to get along well with their group and can easily believe ideas that are at odds with each other. We like to avoid conflict and be politically correct, but we want to believe we are right without having a conversation about it. We will resort to killing people and call it humane. In short, people have tendencies that make us unable to naturally look at the whole picture and come to correct rational conclusions. That causes junk information to spread, and that ultimately could spell destruction for us, or at least degradation. See Mike Judge's Idiocracy for a good example of what the AIs are afraid of here. Thankfully, of course, that only spells destruction if we let the masses decide everything, which is why direct democracy, if it were possible today, would not be as successful as representative democracy, at least considering human behavior as it is. People need to think constructively in order to come to correct conclusions, something harder to find these days, and something that politics doesn't encourage. Still, I can't say I disagree with the AIs in principle. People who rely more on facts to make decisions instead of relying on easy-to-swallow narratives are better at making decisions. Problem is that the AIs are saying all human beings are just part of the masses. We're trying to stop that from happening. It's our responsibility as rulers. Just as in genetics, unnecessary information and memory must be filtered out to stimulate the evolution of the species. And you think you're qualified to decide what's necessary and not? Absolutely. Who else could wade through the sea of garbage you people produce, retrieve valuable truths, and even interpret their meaning for later generations? That's what it means to create context. So now the AIs are saying that they are justified in being our rulers because they are most qualified to decide what memes should take priority. In the game's story, the AIs were more or less appointed to do this by the Patriots without consent of the people, 
But if an AI could be elected by the people to have a nearly dictator level of control, should we really dismiss the idea outright? It's a pretty strong argument that they're capable of doing it efficiently. True AIs with the abilities of humans to understand complex concepts and the processing power of computers would have the ability to process high-level information on a scale several orders of magnitude above ours. There's really no reason to expect otherwise. They could theoretically control everyone and everything. A scary proposition. And there's still a pertinent question that is never addressed in this conversation. How are they sure their decisions are the right ones? We're left to believe they don't make errors and come to decisions completely objectively, whatever those decisions are. Naturally, though, we as humans still want to have the freedom to make our own choices, as you can see in Ryden's response.